started. Okay. All right. Uh, hello. Let's see. Yes, we do have people in the audience. Um, all right. So, hello. I'm the chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee, and we are. We just started our meeting officially. Um, I'm going to ask everybody who all the members who are here to please just identify yourself. It's very helpful for the minutes. And um, okay. Kim Tremblay, Vice Chair. Marcus Smith. Okay. Stepan Cheech. Okay. Joe, just say hi. Okay. Well, Joe is also here. Um, and uh, another member, Christine, is about to sign on on her computer. Okay. Um, great. All right. And let's just for the official, read that official announcement we need to read. Hold on. Um, I have it if you want, Tracy. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I keep it too. That's okay. Right. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of opening meeting law, this meeting of the Transportation Advisory Committee is being conducted via remote participation. All right. Thank you, Kim. Okay. Um, I do see that we have Councillor Devlin got there in the meeting. And um, since this was referred to us from TSO, and then she provided additional guidance as well. Um, Councillor, would you want to speak to that? We, if you raise, if you want to raise your hand, we can bring you in to the room. Okay. Hi, Guilford, will you please let her in? Oh, she's in. Okay. Hi. Um, I don't have much to add. Uh, I'm here if folks have questions, but Andy couldn't come to the meeting tonight. And so um, I'm here in his stead as well to report back to um, TSO. Uh, and I'm sure that we'll get a memo or something from you, Tracy, um, before our meeting as well. But I think, Tracy, you've got a grasp on, on what we need. And I'm here if you get stuck or need any advice on what TSO would be, um, would okay. find most helpful. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. And um, for anybody in attendance, we will have public comment at the end of the meeting. Okay. Um, all right. So the first item uh, was just to go over the backgrounds. Um, so this was referred to as from TSO at the last TSO meeting, which was right before the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, and they did ask for a tax report by next Thursday. So it's a pretty quick turnaround time. And I'll just pull up, I did include, um, I did include in that uh, the Google folder, you know, as I was putting together materials and I also um, sent it out directly to the members, um, what was referred to as from TSO. So let me just pull it up again. Okay, um, let me share my screen. Okay, so here we go. All right, so this is um, the motion that TSO passed. It, they passed it four to zero. Um, and uh, Councilor Devin Gothier was serving as the chair that day since um, Councilor Loops was not available. So TSO's motion was to request a recommendation report from TAC regarding traffic calming measures on Henry Street between Market Hill and Pine Street with a report to TSO by December 7th. And then um, after I received a copy of that motion, I did um, follow up with an email just asking if they had any additional guidance because traffic calming measures is a very broad term, you know, and it can include big things, it can include small things. Um, and I want to know a little bit about more the scope. And so the email that I received back from Councilor Devin Gothier is attached and I'll just read it aloud. You know, it says in terms of guidance, I think it would be helpful if TAC could discuss some options in each category of cost and scale. What's most important, in my opinion, is that TAC consider the elements of cost, implementation time, known impact, upkeep requirements, et cetera, and share those considerations of those areas in the report back. So, and she also says that she knows that the council will want to hear about the feasibility as it relates to cost and demands on staff time. Um, so, one thing for me when I read, um, those kind of details, I mean, particularly, you know, given there's a quick turnaround time and that we're volunteers and we're not professional engineers, like the level of detail in that guidance 
seemed very high to me. Um, and, you know, the, um, the town is looking at hiring an engineering firm to do an engineering study as is required by mass DOT guidance and MUTC guidance before they change the speed limit in that area and so on. And so um, I think that as TAC members and Again, I mean, we're just seeing this for the first time, and this has been something that's been studied by some of the professionals in town for quite a while, um, that we just go over, you know, what our impressions are and what we think can help. But we're not, what we're saying here is not going to replace um, an engineering study. So that's my take on it. And um, I know I see that Guilford raised his hand. So Guilford, feel free to comment if you'd like. And you kind of said, you summed it up quite nicely. So, and do any other members have thoughts about this or should we just kind of proceed to our discussion? I can give a little bit of background. Yeah, no, I think this is good. I mean, to me, it's just something that we can do prior to everything getting sorted on that safety zone stuff, right? It's just something in the near term. So. Right, uh yeah. So we could, I mean, we could say in whatever memo we write up that this is really you know, just as a placeholder until there is an engineering study done, for example. So, um, okay. All right, I will reshare my screen. So um, I did want to just give people background. I don't know if everybody on the committee is familiar with it. Um, I spent some time up there. I went back today too. Um, and Guilford may have additional information to add because I know that the staff have been looking at it. Um, so I'll just share my screen again. And just give like a little overview. So this is on Henry Street. This is on Henry Street, north of Pine Street. Um, a lot of the traffic that flows both north and south on Henry Street, it starts after Pine Street, south of Pine Street. Um, and uh, so one thing is that, so this is the child care center and they do have parking over here. Um, then there is also some parking on this side. This, I believe this lot, I looked it up, this lot is owned by the town. Um, but I did also see that there's a lot of parking there on the weekends. So maybe from tenants or other people. So I don't believe that all that parking is necessarily daycare parking. Um, and then if you go north of the school, whoops, I went too far. Um, that there is a second area for parking on the same side of the street as the daycare. Yeah. Um, there is like quite a bit of slope here. So that's probably why the three cars are parked on this end and not this end, because from my observation, and again, I'm not an expert on this site, but that um, it seemed like it gets pretty steep to try to park over there. That's the entry down into the, um, into this old sports field is where you're basically that yellow circle is i mean that the yellow circle the white circle where you're you know, where yeah, the okay yeah uh -huh. the, the slope down into the athletic field okay. and i think there's some parking there as also because there's a yoga center in one of the buildings across the street from oh okay from the uh from the school this park like over a, here there's a yoga yeah, center yeah, over yeah. here okay yeah. at least there used to be when my son went to um cushman okay um like that was oh five years ago. How old is he now? Yeah, about then. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a while. No, and then um, you know, so I just had pulled it up too, just on the town like assessors map. So this is the lot. You know, as Marcus is saying, there's like a big field area. Um, and then this is the lot with the like the little parking area that's just adjacent to the road and it is that area is area area is owned by the town yeah it is and really the strip that you see there kind of is pretty much as much as you can get into that on the far side mm -hmm. there on that little area of land if you can um it isn't the where you see the little jut in that's pretty much as much as you can actually get into there i think yeah, it, right. it goes up fairly steep as soon as that so yeah. Oh, are you talking over here, Marcus? No, no. On, um, on this little A dash 50 or 59 or whatever it is. Okay. 50, 53. Yeah. yeah. 53. Mm -hmm. the, the gradient there is fairly steep. Oh, okay. So it, the strip there is pretty much as far in as it could possibly go. Got it. Okay. 
Um, and then let's see. Oh. And I'll just also note too, um, and Kim, I'll, I'll give you the floor. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. But there is also, I just went by it, but there's also a bus stop sign. It's the bus stop sign is right here um, near the, um, near the, across the street from the area. So Kim, did you have some comments? I know you had shared your videos. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I was just struck by the fact that the parking on the other side of the street is not even, it's both, you know, the town, I guess it's town right of way across the street, but there is a parking, there is a bus stop, which I was assuming that that area really was maybe originally designed to be a pull-in for the bus. I don't, I have no idea, but oh, um, good point. there are no, there's no actual like houses behind it's just woods behind this. And so my guess is this is like a very impromptu parking um, par parking lot. It may not even be a legal parking lot, actually, because my guess is the town owns it and you're not supposed to even be parking on the side of the road there. So it, am I right about that, um, Guilford? Is there parking on Henry Street? I don't think there is. You're right. This was legacy parking. People just started parking there and making more and more parking. And the right. town just never so it's not even along. real. It's not an actual parking lot. It's owned. And that parcel is owned by someone else that is not the daycare. So it's a well, parking right. spot. Right. I mean, that's what I was saying about how it's full. Like it's full, like even on the weekends from what I could see. Yeah, I saw some people parking there this weekend who clearly were just like on a hike, you know, so they weren't parking in the Cushman lots. They were parking so on. So Guilford, was it originally a, um like for a bus pull off? Because that, that actually makes some sense, but. No, you know. the, the school's always been there and they just kind of had this informal parking there and it's kind of grown over time. Okay. Um, and so the other thing is in that area, um, there are both north and south on the street. I don't need to share it again, but um, both north and south on the street are, um, there are school zone signs. Now I understand that those were grandfathered in um, because they're not actually like official school. It's not actually official school zone. Like uh, one under state statute, well, the school zone signs typically only apply to schools like with kindergarten and up, um, like K through 12 is now for school zones. Um, and also uh, school zones have a speed limit of 20 miles an hour. Um, and, and one of the signs, one of the school zone signs here has it like right next to the school zone sign, it says 25 miles an hour. So um so we were told they're not official. I'm not sure like who put them in and so on. Um, and then when I was there also, um, I noticed that there was, and it's not in the Google maps, but I, I noticed that um, that there was a police, like a trailer sign, like a messaging sign. It said, go slow. And that sign was set up so that the southbound traffic would see it. Um, there was not a comparable sign on the northbound traffic, again, with the assumption that I guess a lot of people are turning north on Pine Street. I mean, to turning like turning on Pine Street before they get to the school. Um, I noticed that the day that I was there um, that I mean, particularly, I guess, because I wasn't turning on Pine Street that, you know, that Northeast Street does run right into Henry Street. So if you aren't turning, you know, you do go straight through. Um, and looking at the speed data that was collected, so there was the um, one of the police officers did collect speed data near the data near the daycare center. Um, they collected it three times in February between three and five p.m. Um, and then they also collected it three times in March um, in the morning between eight and ten a.m. And one thing I noticed with that, um, he had summarized the data, um, just like the average, the total number of vehicles and the average speed, but I actually differentiated it out. I separated it out between the northbound and the southbound traffic. And I found, for example, that in the morning, there was, you know, more speeding traffic. I mean, more traffic going over the speed limit. I looked specifically at like 30 miles an hour and over um, going southbound. And then later in the day, it was more northbound. 
Um, and there were some periods, you know, where it got up to almost like 50% of the cars or more on one particular day were going 30 miles an hour or more. Yeah, um, I mean, it, everybody coming out of Leverett or Market Hill Road going south or going to somewhere, you know, generally out of that way. Um, so they go to work and then they come back again. Right. But it was also really interesting because um, the morning study was done on what day was it? It was done on uh, March 8th, Wednesday, the 8th of March, Thursday, the 9th and Friday, the 10th. And that the Friday was the day before the UMass spring break in the morning. And that one, there were like lower traffic volumes that day, but then there was also almost no speeding that I saw. So, um, in, in either direction, basically, but, and again, it was just in the morning, you know, so these are just snapshots. And so the police, um, officers traffic survey is really, is interesting and helpful. I mean, he was doing it at the peak AM and PM periods for the, the daycare, right? My understanding is that the daycare opens at eight, it closes at five, um, that they ask family, they ask, um, people kids to get dropped off by 9 30 and to be picked you know and that typically people are picked up by 3 30 but then some um kids stay for extended care up till five they have three they have three drop-offs actually like okay. at lunch time th around yeah. three and then okay. At five right and okay so i mean he was just looking at you know these limited periods but you know as part of like a bigger study that would be required to change the speed zone signs like you would actually need to have like 24 hour data i'm pretty sure so mm -hmm. um and okay so i mean those were kind of my main observations and i don't know if anybody else marcus you were a parent there and i know kim you biked up there did you have any other no i mean i used to walk my child up to the school sometimes pick them up too it used to be that like the that they the the staff would park on the other side of the street. So most of the parking was done on the same side to try and, you know, avoid the issue. But yeah, it's, I mean, cars come straight up Henry street. If they're going up through to Leverett and shoots or market Hill road, there's nothing to stop them or slow them down. No track. No, there's no interruption. Right. Um, at least coming South, they're turning onto the street, depending on where they're coming from that, you know, it can re change the momentum or whatever, but, uh, it, it's um it's ripe for something it always has been um i mean the big issue for us when we were walking our sun was actually people just not moving the snow off their sidewalks so it, six of one half a dozen the other unfortunately that puts you out into the road and then you're you know having some issues but um yeah i think we need to take a look at it and just kind of focus on the the stretch between Pine and Market Hill is really kind of where we're at, but how can we disrupt the flow in the near term without impeding, you know, any future work, right? So, yeah. So does, I mean, I have some ideas, you know, cause I like thinking about different options and also looking at the research about what are most effective. Um, but if anybody else has any observations or thoughts, you know, before I kind of give mine, my litany, um, I would welcome that feedback from committee members. Anyway. I'd love to hear solutions, Tracy. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily have solutions. Well, I, I know, have. but what are the tools in the toolbox? I right, guess. right. Talking about temporary uh, solutions. Uh, I was taking a look at it too, because I mean, Coming from the UK, a lot of villages and stuff have the same sort of issue. So there's a lot of stuff in writing out over there about how to kind of reduce the flow and move things around and that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of opportunities here. I mean, we can, I think we're going to need to take a few, right? I think, Tracy, you're talking about, you know, let's have a few options. Right. Just some pros and cons, so. like from the cheapest to the you know, the more expensive side, yeah. but, you know, there's always a pros or a cons to anything. So, I mean, obviously, I think you kind of pointed to the fact that there's already a police sign there, and we've right. seen a lot more um, of the radar signs. So having 
you know, it could be just as simple as having, you know, start off with like having some radar signs each direction, right? Which would mm-hmm. hopefully change some things. I mean, then they can go to being putting in a, a zebra cross, or, or what do you call it? Uh, um, crosswalk. Crosswalk. There you go. Yeah. A crosswalk with some yeah. RFPs. All right. So, but, okay, hold on. Yeah. So slow down. So let's, um, <laughs> Before we get carried away, but Kim, do you have comments? Yeah, I guess I have some concerns mainly about all these solutions because an easy solution is just prohibiting, I mean, parking on the wrong side of the street, on on the non-privately owned, Cushman owned part of the street. That just seems like really like a sensical thing to do. So and, none of it is actually Cushman land, right? Well, it, par- it partly is. It it's all town owned land. Cushman just pays rent. Yeah, it's a, the, oh on the, the, oh, the, the school, whole thing. Okay, the school yeah. is a town owned building. The old because it's it was the old North oh, Emma school. I did not know that's that. That's why that's why there was the school zone signs that have been grandfathered in and all this sort of stuff. That's why there's the sports field down the bottom of the hill. It wow. was all like the Cushman's old Cushman area school, you know, just the same as there's one up in, up at the crossroads in North Amherst and stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, it's all, it's all town owned property. Um, but, but one could easily, you know, restrict it on one side. Yeah. And like I said, child parking, I mean, because that seem, that does seem very dangerous. And that's like I said, when, when my son was there, that was kind of the idea was like the, all the teachers would park on the far side of the street so that you wouldn't bring your kids. But that, I mean, it depends on the time of day and right. how many, how many people use vehicles to pick the kid up versus, you know, walking like we did. It sure. just, it fills up and it can be problematic to, to get to, especially given that actually, I don't know, Tracy, if you've got the, you can pick pick the map up. I mean, the main entrance to the school is on the south side of the school. So parking on the north side, as you pointed out, the, the three cars there or whatever on the picture, you actually have to go into the road where there's no sidewalk to then come down to the south side of the school to pick up your child or anything like that. So, yeah. yeah. But I, I guess I'm just a bit concerned that the school isn't implementing common sense like practices that would enhance the safety. I mean, I think the town should definitely do something, but my concern is just that. Yeah, no, I agree. I think because, 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 you know, for example, some of our children went to the Chinese immersion school. And um, they had a map, the town just changed things dramatically. And in response, the school ended up having a very strict policy about like pick up and drop off, which, you know, enhanced the safety for everyone in the area, you know, Mm -hmm. and schools can do things like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So is that we have to come at it from multiple angles, I believe, you know, I would say, even even if we do, suggest that the you know the parkings uh preferentially the teachers on the other side of the street whatever it still doesn't stop people from speeding you know and there's still no, no, children on the other side of the road so but i do agree that that is certainly part of what we would recommend yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah that's the word sorry <laughs> Because I'm, yeah, I mean, Tracy, like you said. I mean, I've, I've thought about a lot of what you were saying, Marcus. So, I mean, I think, you know, if we're going to talk about like the most temporary short term, you know, compared to like building facilities or, you know, changing the mm-hmm. road and things, which of course, I mean, it really needs an engineering study to proceed on yeah. those. But so one of the things is this, go ahead, Kim. Yeah, I just wanted to say, right, that there have been a lot of issues. We've, as a committee, we've gotten a lot of issues. I mean, there is an inherent problem with people speeding on this road and the lack of appropriate, you know, pedestrian safety on this road, which, you know, for the most part, this road is not that heavily um, populated, you know, but it's a known problem. We've, we've encountered this many, many times before as a committee that people use all of Henry street or wherever it connects to, to kind of bypass downtown and speed like hell, like people speed like crazy on this street. I agree. 
So, well, well, and what I was saying too, Kim, like, because, you know, when I drove to see it, right, I came up Northeast Street and I stayed on Northeast until it turns into Henry. There's really nothing to slow you down. Mm hmm. You know, right before you get to Pine, if you're going north, it says it's 20, it changes from 35 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour, but nothing in the road is changing, right? And I mean, we know enough as a committee and, you know, I know enough from everything I've read is that you can't just, you can't just change. And this is the thing too, even with having a traffic, like a safety zone, you can't just change the speed limit sign. You actually need to do something to make the speed change. Unless mm -hmm. you're going to have somebody stay like somebody stationed there 24 seven to do enforcement. Right. I mean, I I mean that's mean, one of the, that's yeah. one of the challenges I have about the mass general law that lets you like reduce the speed limit throughout town. Again, like, unless you're actually doing things and enforcing it, I don't it think mean it anything. works yeah, that it, much. Um, and that's kind of where you get, you know, like we we're talking about, right. We need to make people aware of the speed that they need to be going at. Right. either by forcing them down to that speed or making them aware of that speed or making them think twice, you know, whatever. So, yeah. you know, from like the, the police, what is it? The, those, you know, the, the speed radar signs right. is one is a simple end. It's not yes. cheap, but it's something that just can stand there until we figure something out. So you could go, you know, all the way down to like change the priority of the turn. So Henry street isn't a through street anymore you know, the actual primary direction of travel down from is from Henry into Pine. So you're actually forcing people to take that corner. And if they want to go straight on, then they need to, you know, do something, a jog. Or, I mean, it's also possibly even as simple as just painting a big, a big fat 25 in the middle of the road, mm -hmm. right, on each yeah. of the directions, just to remind you multiple times. And there's various different ways of doing it. We know yeah. we have a problem. All right. Well, I let, mean, yeah, go on. Sorry. Let, let, no, I mean, let's kind of like talk about a couple of the options. Okay. So let's start. So the speed feedback signs, that's mm -hmm. what I'm going to call them, because um, there was, I read a report that came out of NHTSA um, and it was a comprehensive, it looked at every, it looked at, it did a literature review of all the studies that have involved speed feedback signs. It came out in late 2021. Um, and there were a number of those studies that were conducted with with school zones, for example. You know, they did show um, that they do have an impact on the speeds that people are traveling um, mm -hmm. up to, say, at least, you know, five miles an hour different, like less or something. And making people aware, I mean, I have one on Amity, you know, which is close to my house. And, um, you know, when they're posted and they have the the current speed limit and the posted speed limit, you have that together, you know, and some of them even have like smiley faces or frowny faces, or they blink red if you're above the speed limit or whatever. Um, but they do show that they're effective. Um, they are relatively inexpensive compared to like infrastructure changes. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, to me, it's sort of a low hanging fruit that you could put them in there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then also, I mean, you know, the ones that were putting up around town, including on Amity, they are affixed to traffic pole. Like they are affixed to existing poles and they are solar powered. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, we, you know, yeah, that's not, yeah. they're, they're not a big maintenance thing. I don't know. Guilford would know more about if they malfunction a lot, but Guilford, do you have any comment on them? Um, so, uh, so that I mean that could be one thing in in Guilford. Oh, Guilford just. You guys have I have no comment. You guys are coming up with your thing. Okay, we're coming up with our thing. Okay, <laughs> um, and so, I mean I don't know exactly what they're priced at. The town manager mentioned something to you about you know eight thousand dollars or I mean I think you know different ones are different. Um, mm -hmm. But again, I think compared it's to an option, but right? compared to compared to like infrastructure. Yeah. changes right um uh -huh. that's sort of a first step now if you are looking at infrastructure changes i mean there's a whole i mean i could have sent you a number of links and, you know there's tons of um like toolkits and things that have been developed just you know if you just search on traffic calming here i'll show one um traffic calming measures you know the mass dot has them and the institute for traffic engineers have them and 
NACTO, which is a, you know, the Association of City Traffic Officials have them, you know, where there's, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of them have to, a lot of them involve um, like permanently reducing the width of the street. Mm -hmm. So the research shows that the research that I've seen is, you know, when you look at different ways that you can calm traffic, if all, if what you mainly have is signage or if you have blinking crosswalks or whatever, like none of those are as effective as actually reducing the width of the street and making people slow down. Yeah. And um, that's, that's kind of one, one of the areas, you know, like you're talking about, like you change the di direction. Oh, sorry. Somebody has their hand up. Christine. Um, Christine. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. I was just going to say, um, back in the temporary solutions category um how about those big rubber speed bumps i mean i don't know their cost um but usually they seem like they're painted bright yellow and whatever um and they could be out there i think ideally coupled with a um whatever you called those the speed speed feedback Speed feedback signs. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but I think um, doing a little bit more to actually slow the traffic down, <laughs> um, you know, makes sense to mm -hmm. me. I just wanted to offer that up as another possibility. Uh, this... Guilford's got his hand up. Sorry. So um, temporary speed bombs won't work in this area because we have to take them in and put them back out. Um we had them before and we've plowed them up. So it's more cost effective if you're going to say you need speed bumps and just put speed bumps, permanent ones, and don't use the plastic ones. Right. And, and didn't the school, I thought I read something that the school tried to put out something like that or didn't you read? They that? have like the little, like the little kids on the sign side, on the side signs. Oh, oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. I thought. That's yeah, good. but I yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, that's Christine brings up a good point. Like potentially, I think we would want to pursue more than one just solution, right? It'd be a sign plus something, or speed bumps plus something, or a change in the road plus something, you know, just so that it's a kind of hit it with two two areas. My concern with speed bumps, especially like the permanent ones, is just the noise they create. Um, depending on where we would want to cite them because we there's no point in putting a speed bump outside the school because then people are at speed until the school right you'd want to break up the the flow of traffic prior to the school on either side so that you slow people down in advance and then they're slow as they go through and that puts it puts the speed bumps pretty much right outside some people's homes right and Speed bumps are noisy. So, oh. yeah, because, I mean, especially given that the bus is going through here, you just get the big, you know, as they hit them, everything goes up as they come down. There's the, just the thing, that sign. It's just a noisy option in my, you know, uh, my understanding of what it is and reading up on it and everything. I mean. Yeah, it's just, it's just it's that they're, they exist on a street right next let's, to mine. Let's um, hear from the person who worked with uh, UMass Transit and the PTA. Thanks. Well, I wasn't going to comment on that. I mean, okay. um, but I was, I was just going to say that if there's a concern from that um, with respect to the, <clears throat> excuse me, not the speed, the um, the noise of the speed bumps and vehicles going while vehicles go over them, I feel like we could easily pull neighborhoods that have already installed them, such as Lincoln Avenue or even uh, you know, private neighborhoods, I feel like they have them. You look at South Point, the boulders. Um, and then if people are have concerns, I haven't personally heard concerns about that. And and um, from the outside of the bus, I mean, for, for, sorry, from the outside of, yeah, from the outside of the bus when it goes over, it's not personally that loud. I mean, inside it is, I guess, kind of inside the vehicle, but it's obviously not really a factor to people living around there because it's, you know, it's on the inside. But it's not that loud from the outside. It's just the slowing down, you know, squeaking of brakes and stuff. But I personally feel like, and maybe I can't, maybe I shouldn't be speaking for everyone, but I feel like most people in the neighborhood would take that over speeding vehicles, especially if the the houses that are leading up to the day school on either end are also complaining about and noticing vehicles speeding. They might uh, 
be okay with that. Like if I was living there, I would probably be okay with that. So I feel like uh, uh, surveying people for this would also be a, I don't know if that engineering firm would be yeah. bad. Or... Yeah, yeah, getting, I... getting some feedback on it. I mean, yeah. we're not saying don't have speed bumps, so we're not doing anything else. <clears throat> Certainly that's not my point. My point was taking a different approach, right? Mm -hmm. Something that is less noisy or less, dis less. I wouldn't say disruptive, but just let, yeah, less noisy. And um, things like you were talking about, you know, putting bumps into the into the road so that you then have to either stop or, you know, give priority, give way to people as they're coming from the other direction, right? I mean, we have two directions of travel where coming north on Henry Street, the northbound lane continues all the way through. And if you could break that up and force people to move around it and go slow at some point, it's great. And then on the way southbound prior to the school, same deal. You've come, you're accelerating around the bend. If you're forced to then slow down to stop or whatever, to move around an obstacle, it then puts you, you know, um, at a much slower pace to go, th go towards the um, area in question. I just feel that like, yeah, anyway. I'll... But I, I think that's like talking about one that's like re- structuring you know that's changing the flow of traffic there and then also you'd have to have something to like make sure that when you have the one-way traffic that you aren't creating more of an issue because in some cases when you have one-way traffic I mean because there's no opposing traffic it ends up making vehicles go faster right so a lot of times right, so that's why you would put it in the lane city as like one way you know one-way pairs and those are can be like sort of like highways yeah. through a city or whatever to like no and that's like, why um traffic. i mean i would I'll, I'll find a picture of them but i mean you know there is there are ways where you can just pinch it and create a center you know a right of way through the center of the roadway right or there are ones where you block off one one lane or another so, so that you force traffic to move around an object um but but then yeah. that can be trouble that can be hard on you know, different size vehicles or emergency. Vehicles. Yeah, it's it's. Well, I mean, if you look at like near like Kendrick Park, for example, you know, sometime like it's right. We Kendrick Park is now one way, and it's signs. You know, there's pavement markings to show that like the parts that you're not supposed to be in, or even at that roundabout right there, right that there's a wide turning lane. Like if you were going from East Pleasant Street like onto North Pleasant Street to go towards campus, you know, for example that fire trucks and things could turn there but um, yeah we're not talking about like big turns no but something I mean, that's not going to impede like, the the right of way other than it's forcing someone i you know to to um you know there's a priority to travel right? right so someone coming one way or another but it's still easy to go move around the object yeah and, and let me I mean, and so one thing that um, Northampton High School has done near Northampton High School on Route 9, like since there was the bicycle fatality there with the distracted driver, is that they've actually put up to narrow the road when they've um, reduced on street parking, which was across the school, but they've also put up barricades, you know, basically to make it look like, like a slow zone, you know, and to make it clear that it's more narrow here and that people shouldn't be going fast and yeah to put in an effective. island pretty i much. mean you could i mean that's not an island that's more of like on the side but even just i mean this is this is like very short term you know but to have like you know even like cones i don't know something does it look like something the, that temporarily looks like more narrow does it look like the barricades that are around the parklets downtown and and the back end yeah parklets? sort of like that yeah yeah, I was going to suggest that. I think that's actually a really good idea. Um, you know, it immediately narrows the street and that, mm -hmm. you know, results in much slower speeds. Vision, but, visually narrows it, if it, even if it doesn't actually narrow it. Right. right. Yeah. I guess, I guess I, I, I'm not quite seeing that, but one thing I did notice when I was there, right, is part of the problem is cars are parking on either side of the street front end. So there is 
um, not as much room between the end of the cars, right, and the street. And so my thought is that's where kids are, you know, the issue is that the street is right there. <laughs> And children are walking in this narrow strip that's very close to the street to begin with. So I don't know how much of that, how, how much of that you could actually do there. Well, and then also with the bus stop there too, right. like I would be like, you can't really. You couldn't, I don't know where you would put those barriers if that's what we're right. talking yeah. about because because also cars are front end parking, you know, there. So they have to back out, you know, presumably into the street um, and potentially into a barrier, right? It so to, it shouldn't occur right in front. Wouldn't we want, ideally, wouldn't you want the slowness to occur? Like as you're uh, approaching. Yeah. You're approaching right. Yeah, that's true. Um, which seems like it's further afield from where the actual parking is. Right, but I yeah. Unfortunately, though, there are houses at least coming right northbound. It's right in front of people's homes. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, right. in the driveways and driveways. Yeah, yeah that, that's. I mean, I do like that idea, but yeah, I mean. Yeah, the driveway thing is. It's problematic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because even you know, I thought I looked at yeah. a stop sign. You know, potentially a stop sign. You know, situation too, which I did have images of that, and there are like driveways right all over there's like essentially a place where there's a t right where um are you whatever. talking about back at pine yeah that pine yeah and, 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 but there are people's like driveways oh, all yeah. over there and like mm -hmm. you know there's someone's driveway essentially a, right across where that car is right, right so right where the hell would you put a stop and there's one right where the where the the other car is right now in the middle right of that there. intersection, there's somebody else's driveway right there. So I don't see how you know you could slow things down. I mean, it just makes putting a stop sign in there very complicated. Can I ask um, a technical question of Guilford about the temporary speed bumps? Guilford, are you available for a technical question? Yes. So you said that it's just um, expensive because those temporary speed bumps need to be removed every time you're plowing. Is that what you had said was the um, the difficulty with those temporary speed bumps? The, the really good ones cost almost as much as an asphalt one. And then you're just taking it in and out all the time. And the, you take it out in the fall and you put it back in in the summer or spring when oh. it stops snowing. Okay. Got it. So can I share something? Sure, please. Um, sorry. So this was the sort of idea I was talking about where you're just forcing, you know, a bump out into the road. Uh, okay, and then... Marcus, I'm not sure. I can't see. Oh, no, I haven't. Sound. I haven't done it yet. I clicked my <laughs> okay. screen, but then I didn't actually hit the thing. Yeah, I know. All right. It's operator error on the largest scale. Um, so, you know, generally the direction of traffic is going this, you know, is going into the page. Right. So this would be one way or another. There's a, you know, mm -hmm. some nice just a bump of something with a sign in the middle of it to make sure you realize it's there, but you're giving way to the oncoming traffic. So, and then it's just that all it is, is that bump, or there is, you know, something similar kind of on the pinch point side, obviously not this extreme, but where you come in and you narrow the road straight up there. I mean, that I had thought about tying this sort of pinch point idea in with like a speed table to cross the street, but then what are you crossing to? You know, the, the most obvious point is to the front door, but that's not where anybody, nobody uses the front door at Cushman Scott. They all use the, the south door. And if you did that straight across there, you'd actually take away parking and the bus stop on the other side. So that doesn't work. So, and then you're just slowing people at the point there rather than slowing them prior to them getting into it. But mm -hmm. I mean, to me, this sort of idea on the right here, if you put it for traffic going northbound, you know, to break it up as they enter the area and the same on southbound as they enter the area, just beforehand, it just makes people think about it. But 
uh, to me, that's kind of on the upper end of cost and things, yeah. right? You know. Well, so. and I mean that can be challenging. I think with like certain size vehicles. So if we're looking at, I guess so we're moving on. It sounds like from the temporary solutions to looking at like infrastructure, like changing infrastructure. Well, I think but I in, mean so when I say case, temporary, uh -huh. I'm just thinking of something that we can do right now, and we right. know is going to go away in the end, right? So if you met, you know, if you put a bunch of asphalt on top of this and put a couple of flower pots on it that's as temporary as you can get but you can get rid of it easily when the final final idea mm, comes through you know it's not something where you're digging up the road to sort it out you know um actually that could even be a jersey barrier but yeah so um i also think um, like undo. The the major, you know, it seems to me, and maybe some of you who drive through there know this because I don't drive through there, the major speed, like people who are using this as a shortcut, like you said, are the people coming down and probably speeding through there, people coming down from the hills and using this as a cut through to go maybe to UMass or also just to proceed to bypass town on Henry or Street. Is that true? Like, and then the yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah, and yeah. The yeah. converse: people coming using the rest of Henry or Northeast Street to kind of as a bypass, and mm -hmm. then just plowing through there to go back up to Leverett, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So, you know, to me, there, there to to interrupt that flow a bit. One option would be to put a a stop sign on mm -hmm. one end of that um t intersection between whatever cush that road that cushman market oh, is on. yeah 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 yeah. and um henry henry proceeding north northbound yeah. so um, yeah so you wouldn't have a three-way intersection no, it would just, be, just be a one-way yeah no that's yeah I, yeah and then and then one at the other end of the um coming down from leverett proceeding on to that i i i don't know there is, there is tech, so yeah i mean it depends on how you you get i mean i don't know if tracy's got the yeah. map if you pull the map up i mean i'm trying to like bring it up <laughs> it, the, the problem is you know if you if you take the corners correctly from bridge street into henry you can keep up a good pace going through there bridge street i'm sorry yeah yeah um just just the way that everything is is kind of like northeast street in that oh. it's all kind of no not not north pleasant street it's kind of like you know how we, they've got all the banked curves and everything like just that whole intersection bridge street market hill road henry street is all oh. uh, fairly um banked yeah it, yeah uh conducive to a continuance of your momentum through the th if we're going to get fancy Right. right but um yeah i mean you could turn market hill road henry street into some form of stop sign stop sort of sign thing there. so no. you're talking about yeah. up here there is a stop sign here y y yes going north yes there isn't one for anybody coming up market hill road or down market hill road it's just purely a normal intersection because that that's, that's what i'm saying is if you're coming off bridge street oh, if you could have us... is right you don't actually lose momentum really going then down Henry Street. So wait, your proposal would be to have a three-way stop up here? Some, something. I don't know. But, you know, the point is we're trying to break people's momentum through right, right. this street. You know, I do like the, you know, the idea of just having that northbound stop sign because that's kind of just, yeah, it's, makes everybody yeah. pause well, on the way up the but how do you address it on the way Wait, down do you mean the yeah. north the north, yes, right, north sign right there at, yeah, yeah. Pine but that's where and... but that's where kim was saying that it's like complicated because no it's but, not but driving a three-way but we don't need a three-way right. intersection you're just trying to stop the traffic right. going northbound just and it, yeah just at that one, it's not, com it, will, it might be complicated. I don't know what the rules are because I think there's a house with a driveway pretty much it is, but it's across the street. From I mean, we, we just showed like how there's two, like there's one on this side and one. Like... Yeah, but um, Tracy, <laughs> right where you would put the, right where you would put that right. top yeah, sign, there is where... nothing there. Correct. 
it it's right before one of the driveways. I mean, that doesn't right. meet the engineering standards, but probably sure. not. But we're yeah. talking temp. This is still in the temporary solution, right? Is that right? Oh, it, yeah. Okay, if it's still a temporary idea. I mean, Guilford, do you want to say anything? I'm sorry, Tracy. If you moved us on, I totally missed it, or I just got no, 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 no. I mean, I was, I was, I was figuring that if by the time you install a stop sign, that it, it's not just a temporary thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But technical question: What's the timeline that we would be looking at for installation of a stop sign? So know. you you guys have you you do you do you want my comment tracing? Sure, please. So basically, you've chosen a bunch of options, which for us to install requires an engineering study and compliance with requirements of various state and federal rules. Um, even Marcus's temporary thing, you do have to design and engineer it, and you have to uh, justify why you did it. You just, <clears throat> it's just not something to be installed. Right. Um, no, I understand. I mean, um, I mean, the only thing, right? So the, the um, having the speed feedback sign is about all you can do. Having the um, speed feedback sign is something you can do, and as you and, point, as you pointed out in the conversation, um, the studies show they're only effective for a short period of time, and then they're recommended to be taken down. And then put back up at another period of time, which is doable here because school, you could, when schools, when UMass is not in session, you could change it and move it around. Um, but it actually shows too that when you remove signs, like if you look at that, like make the meta, you know, study with all the literature that um, there's a few things is one um, that even if you remove the ver the speed feedback signs that the vehicle speeds don't automatically increase again. Right away, um, like the, correct. It doesn't automatically increase. Right. I mean, it can be like effective for up to like even a few years, like after they're removed. But um, uh, mass and some of them. Yeah, I wanted to. If you could send me your link, go for because I couldn't find that. Is that in that um? Is that in that document about the the document about the mass DOT document about the pro the procedures? Is it in this one? The um, can you see that the, yep. the the procedures and is it in that or it's yeah, talking about bottom, that? Or? If you read the bottom, it says that they shouldn't they. Keep yeah, going that, down. no, I know it's intensity. I've I've been looking at it. Um, then it is talking about. Are you talking to in this section about it? No, safety zones are totally different. They have okay. at the end is a section on those driver feedback oh, okay. signs. Oh, all right. Oh, right, right, sorry. Oh, here, right here. But so actually, so Guilford, this guidance came out before that NHTSA study that I was quoting. So I don't know whether they would update it like based on that. I'm not sure but, they would. No, it's true. But. I mean, we're still, we're seeing the same thing. It's like, as soon as people get used to something, they the speeds go yeah. back up and you have to do something else. So temporary things do, things that can be moved around are actually probably more conducive. So, well, right, and we are, I mean, our guidance is temporary, right? Because there is going to be a study. Too. Yeah. But yeah. I think you're talking about the fact, Guilford, that that study is going to take a year or so. And in that time frame, people are going to get used to it. But there are, um, can we attach these things to telegraph poles? You cannot. Damn it. Because there's a ton of them. You could just move them, you know, up up one pole and down one pole, and up one pole, and down one pole, until you blew in the face. Anna has her hand up. You're on mute, Anna. No, I got to turn her on. Hold on. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. Uh, it's always great when Guilford is the one who decides whether or not I get to talk. <laughs> um, so, OK, can I just, I'm trying to just screw my head on straight here. And I'm glad my camera's not on, because I'm sitting here looking at, looking at this with the most confused face. Um, this motion came to the town council. So just to, to make sure everyone's got the back story here, the council voted to approve the um, implementation of safety zones. And that's something that we will be coming to TAC for feedback on. But in order to create a safety zone, you have to first create the um, 
like the requirements for one, right? And so that would be what we come to tap for. So we can't, we were looking for something to support the families that are that are struggling with the speeding in front of the school while we also concurrently are going to work on creating the safety zone stuff because we know that's going to take longer. But what I'm hearing, Guilford, is basically what you're saying is that there is no temporary measure we can take other than those speed notification signs until we have a safety zone. So I think where my challenge is like, where, where what communication loop didn't happen to not just say that up front? Because I mean, we're an hour into this meeting and we're, I'm, I'm trying to figure, is that true, Guilford? Is, is really the only thing we can do before we have these safety zone policies established is put up a speed sign? Technically. Technically? What is yes, because even if you do, you, you can do in the safety zone, the safety zone is a study in itself. And then putting in raised crosswalks or putting in channeling devices, which is Mark, which Marcus is talking about, you need to do an engineering study before you do that. So you have justification. I mean, if someone has an accident there when you do this stuff, you have to have a back, a, a reliable reason why you did it. And you can say that. Um, yeah. Yes, there are accidents that happen there now, but you also have to be careful how you address this if you want to put it in but then again the council if, if the council just wants to vote to put it in you can put it in but the recommendation from well, my recommendation will be not to do it until the studies are done okay now in so, guilford what do you see as a time frame for the studies yeah we like have a, we, we have a scope of work from the consultant um paul has said we can go ahead and do it so we'll probably get the task order out next week or the week after because of vacations and vacation or um, holidays and so forth. So they'll be ready to start. And I think they had a, they had a two or three, two month, two or three month turnaround on it. So, but Guilford, sorry, last question. Thank you for giving me the time, Tracy. You just said something that I think is the loophole that I'm trying to make sure is there is I'm just trying to confirm whether it is or is not there, which you said if the council decides to put it in without a study, is that what you said that we could do that as keepers of the public way? You can, but then you are totally liable for anything that yeah. happens and you have no justification for why you did it. Understandable. So I think um, what I'm going to say to TAC is that it would be helpful if you would give us a recommendation to do or do not do that. Um, and I, you know, I, I think that would be something that keeps coming up as the topic of discussion of should the council just supersede the recommendation and be liable. And I'm not going to take a position on that right now, but that I think would be something helpful to hear from TAC is in your opinion, should the council supersede that, um, that process? I think that's all I've got for now. Thanks. To, um... and that's looking for solutions beyond just the simple, right? The speed signs and the, you know, whatever. So. Yeah, I mean, I have to say personally, I mean, we we could, you know, go around because it sounds like that's the feedback that uh, the counselor is asking for. But I mean, I do not feel comfortable like not like following a professional engineer's advice. And I, I mean, we're an advisory committee. You know, we advise and the council can do what it wants as um as go for the same, but I mean I mean there are reasons that the studies are done too. You know, and it's also come up that, you know, there's also other places that also feel like they need traffic calming. Like we hear from neighborhoods all the time. I mean neighborhoods throughout town. Um, so I you know, I don't know if that was where the town I mean, I think this was actually a request that came traffic calming in this area was actually a request that came through the JCPC like resident request process last year um, for 2020, you know, the one in the spring for 2024. But again, um, personally, I'm not going to take a stance against like what the professional engineer in the room is telling us. So I think, so I think we just need to go around the route, like you were saying, right, go around the room and decide i mean each provide input as to whether we feel comfortable with um opening the town to liability given what we understand right or uh for actions beyond what we've talked about right so 
we understand that we can do we can do something and we can put in you know signs and that sort of thing to get people to to be aware but we we understand that that's in all in this process and then the, the process you said Guildford was you know we're likely to at least get things moving along here fairly shortly so it's not like we'll be waiting years which is was my initial concern which I'm I am very so yeah pleased. I mean yeah. before Marcus before we like go around the room um so Guildford you had said right that the consultant would be hired soon probably and that there would be a two to three month time frame so like when do you think that it would come back like it would be ready for, for you know viewing from the council and the public about what the findings of the consultant two to three months right so it would be like by this early spring like spring sometime it would be spring yes well i mean is it fair to have anyone or any traffic study done over the next i mean the next two months umass is not in session essentially they don't come back until February. Yeah, I, do, I don't think UMass is the problem, right? It, it is part of the issue, but it is not the sole cause. But it is a uh, big factor. Like, it is a big driver of the traffic volume in the area. Absolutely. And, and, but I and, think and, and again, like, there was an observation. You know, it's just one observation. But when that police officer was doing the traffic speeds, and it just happened to be the day before spring break, like, they, it was a lot less... Yeah, I'm so, just th thinking the fact that people yeah. that come from Leverett and Shrewsbury and Market Hill Road aren't necessarily of a student persuasion, right? Oh, They're yeah, more of a professional right. persuasion, and they go to UMass outside of those hours, you know, at a time of year. So I think absolutely, but I people... think the traffic on the road will be less, absolutely, but. Um, I think we can't just, you know, say, oh, it's it's out the window, whatever. But I no, do I... think that, you know, we're only talking here about a two to three month time frame. I completely agree. And in that time frame, I hope that people who live in that area clear the sidewalks because that was my always my problem when I my son went there. So, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things going on. Um, but I will also say, Marcus, that I think, you know, since COVID, that my experience as somebody who works at UMass, maybe Kim has a different experience, but that a lot of a lot more of the professionals at UMass are working off campus or working yeah, off uh, campus yeah, yeah. at least part of the time. Mm -hmm. And so it is like definitely a different pattern. And and also the fact that UMass is the largest employer in Hampshire County. I mean, that professors do you know, keep different schedules. I, I completely classes agree. Classes aren't yeah. in session. So, I mean, some people have to go in to you know, like check on their labs, um, but other people do not. And so I would, and, I would sorry, agree I would, that yeah. you would, we would want to collect the data, like when the UMass s s semester is in session. Yeah. And sorry, my thing was more about, it's not yeah. on the students. It's not on. It, no, it, no. It, it, I mean, it's uh, just uh, all of the traffic related. Yeah. Right. Because, because, you know, I can assure you that when it campus is not in session, there are plenty of people who are speeding through UMass as well. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and also, I mean, you, UMass is so they're not a, having to use the back ways because they can go right through <laughs> campus. Yeah, and in, yeah. and additionally too, like the UMass ebbs and flows, like do impact like a lot of other businesses off campus, right? Like so, you'll look mm -hmm. at downtown mm -hmm. businesses that have reduced hours until the students come back or that kind of thing. So, but anyway, I mean, anyway, okay, but we digress. So I guess we should just go around and just, um, you know, so what we were asked is whether TAC would advise, you know, that that some of these measures, these temporary measures, be put in place beyond just having you know a speed sign or or as kim was saying you know more kind of like enforcement you know more uh um, well, staffing think, more staffing you know to actually to like make sure people are going slower um i think it, the the it was study. it was put in place without the engineering studies right right, right. yeah that, i think that's the key part is put in place without engineering study to back right. it up so that the question uh, over again? Putting in place a permanent solution without the engineering study, is that the question? Well, I think it's even putting in place a even a temporary solution that impacts the roadway itself. 
like the width of the roadway be, before there's an engineering study. So oh, even, even speed bumps, you know, anything that would impact the, yeah. Joe right. has a question. Hey, uh, I was just going to ask, like, what is the quickest, are we sure on the turnaround time for the engineer's report for a temporary solution? And then my only other feedback would be like, could the police put any kind of signage or anything there in terms of something that can be done immediately? Well, I know one thing was when I was there, right, the trailer, um, the trailer with the message sign, it's only in the one direction. It's not, it wasn't in the other direction. So, I mean, even just if there, I don't know how many the, the police department has, if they, and there's also requests for them in other parts of town too, including downtown, um, if yeah. they have those resources. And Anna has another question or has her hand up. Sorry, it, it really wasn't that important. Um, Tracy, I just, you you were citing that the traffic study was the day before spring break, but only one of the days, I mean, it went back to the 14th. So I don't I don't actually think that that's a factor in this um, as much as it, as folks might think, because it started, I mean, they had Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the 14th. No, no, no. So Anna, you had, I guess, um, all I was mentioning is that the, um, of course, they looked at Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in the morning of March, you know, in March, like the second week of March. Um, but I, it was just interesting to me that in terms of, because what I did is I looked, I separated out the data and I looked north and south at like the speeding, mm -hmm. the, the percentage of cars that were speeding, um, like 30 miles an hour or higher, like on each of the because the report from the officer didn't actually break out the north and the south in terms of vehicle speeds. And I looked at it that way. And it's just on that, it just happened to be on that particular morning, which happened to be the day before spring break. There could have been other factors. It could have been a weather factor. I didn't go check any of those factors, but that there was like significantly less speeding than there had been the other days. Yeah, it's interesting. I guess I, I would have thought so. that there'd be more folks um on the road that day because folks were leaving campus, but it's interesting to consider the implications of that. Okay, thanks. So that's just a one data point. And I mean, it's not a comprehensive study or anything. I just noted. That. Right. Yeah. Thanks. And in my, in my experience as a professor there, students leave early for um, any break. And they'll leave before Friday. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, okay. But um, Joe, your hand is still up. And we should just keep an eye on the clock because we do need to take some vote or something before. Well, I, I would suggest after we hear from Joe that we go around and um, state, you know, maybe we all individually address whether or not we think that um, the council should instill. I, what was the what was the question exactly? The whether or not the council should go ahead and um, install any any permanent measures that are not preceded by a traffic study or engineer or whatever whatever the actual question was. I think but they Joe were even temporary measures, right? Even temporary. Should, they, should there be temporary, you know, road design flow me measures like before there's the engineering study? And but Joe. Oh, do you have yeah, actually, so so my hand was up from before, but I'll just kick off the answers. You know, I think we should have an engineer study. I just don't know how long it it would take, you know, for the temporary measure. If it takes too long, obviously no. I'm just also curious, though, is is the town just as liable if there's an accident in the interim just because it was raised? Hmm. I think that's the question for Guilford. There's there's always the possibility to be sued. Everything I do, everything I do not do. <laughs> the town, there's there's someone, if something that goes wrong and something doesn't go the way some people like, there's a possibility of being sued. We haven't done made any changes. The the studies we have done don't really indicate there really needs to be a speed change. The speed limit is as low as it goes. Um leaving the leaving the school signs, school zone signs up there opens the town up for some liability. Mm -hmm. the, the study for a three-way stop showed there wasn't a warrant for meeting a three-way stop. So there, the, yes, there's liability all around, no matter what you do. But if you actually physically decide to go do something additionally, mm -hmm. do, you, do you incur, I mean, when, when, 
speed bumps first speed humps first came out people were suing like crazy because they didn't like the speed hump on their street um they've, they've, they've kind of stopped and people don't sue anymore so there's always a possibility you do something or don't do something and something gets sued okay thank you for that sorry for the rambling <laughs> all right let's go around the room so so marcus and i spoke and joe so chris stefan I know, Chris, you have to leave soon. Yeah, um, I really have to go. I, um, yeah, I would wait for the study. And I'll, I'll go. I, I would also um, wait for the study. Yeah, and I'll, I'll echo that. I would also be more comfortable waiting as well. Uh, sorry, I had to run downstairs to my daughter. Uh, I would also prefer that we wait the two or three months for the engineering study yep all right so that i mean i guess we don't we can take an official vote but um no i mean so that's... just so do we do we recommend that they're that the town consider anything else uh well, i think I... we recommend that we need we need to include the the speed signs and stuff right speed signs right okay that that's as a, our... as a temporary measure pending yeah. the um, yeah. And then and then Kim had also raised the points about like looking at any kind of at least temporary parking reconfiguration to reduce the number of that's a great yes. I mean they should just be they I I mean I feel like they sh there are there I have no idea what they I'm I'm sure the school has tried to do something, but there are ways of making of better encouraging parents to and be take more responsibility and park more, you know, more responsibly in whatever form that is. I don't know. Not that parents aren't trying to do that already, but we all get too hurried sometimes and run out of time and whatever. Because there was that one picture of a car parked this way and a car parked this way. Mm -hmm. Cars parked. I've been there. I've done that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And you can I'm just right say, no, you, you can't do that anymore, right? Yeah, and I've almost left my kid at school there overnight, <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> so. <clears throat> so is that all we have then? No, we, ha we have, so we have made that recommendation. You have toured it. I'm going to just share. No, we need so public we can, comment. We need, yeah. we need we oh, public, public comment. comment. We can, but I will. Um, so what we're just saying is um, just, you know, if we want to be on record, like all of us who are here, which is all the members six zero. That we're saying, right, that we support, you know, waiting until the engineering study is complete. And we've been told that it will be completed in the spring, um, installing the speed feedback signs. It's not really even installation because some of them don't need to be installed. And then also yeah. temporary parking measures, measure, like changes to encourage more parking. And one thing I would say in, on the installation of feedback signs in the meantime right. and raising awareness of right. the, the current speed, you know, through the use of that sign, whatever the it awareness. is, painting it on the road, right. on the using like, that trailer sign whatever sign you know of the current speed yes and then also i guess if we want to advocate for enforcement you know if there are the resources to yeah do absolutely that. absolutely so yeah, yeah. i mean but that's that's also all of henry street or whatever that street is northeast henry uh -huh. it is yeah. crazy town that's including along all right okay so that's what we would say that's what we'll tell the yeah. council all right. So I guess, do we want to have a motion that that would, that's what we want to support? Well, I, didn't we all just say that? I mean, yeah, that's no. all do they're we looking to, for. Okay. We don't. We're it, all I, I, We support. It wouldn't hurt. I don't think it would just hurt. Just like to be official, yeah. Robert yeah, yeah. and all Agreed. that, you know? <laughs> so. so. So I make a motion that we, um, we, uh, our memo to the um, council includes what is written on the screen in front of us installation of feedback signs Being completed in the spring i mean i'm just going to say that right raising so. awareness of the current speed 
um, encouraging further enforce, uh, um, police right. enfor um, enforcement, enforcement along mm -hmm. Northeast Street and encouraging um, the daycare to um, instill some more temporary parking changes. Okay. All right. All in favor? I guess we'll, you know. We'll oh, second. Ahead. Someone needs to second Oh, yeah. That. Second it. I'll second it. All right. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll raise our hands. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. We all raised, we all voted. So it's five. Zero. That's only, yeah, five and, of us right now. And Chris was, you know, Chris was here and she supported it. So, okay. Thank you. All right. I guess we'll open it up to public comment. And we have, I guess we have almost all the, a lot of comment. Um, Kim, do you want to call on people? And I can can't see anybody. So Jeremy oh. Anderson. And can we just kind of keep track of time? Well, we have to because we yeah. all have to be done. But this meeting ends at seven. So, well, I mean, we can go over, but but not by a lot. Well, I have dinner waiting for me. So. Okay, <laughs> let's get started. Let's right, get started. Jer okay, thank you. We'll allow Jeremy Anderson in. Hi. Right, um, thank you for talking about the safety issue in Henry Street. And as everyone here has just discussed, this is a problem that's been going on for at least 30 years. A lot of the what was mentioned today is incredibly frustrating how little information has been provided to you from the town staff. The summary of the north-south traffic is something that I sent to you in an email. The parking solutions is something we've been working with the town staff, with the town manager, with Guilford directly to identify parking solutions. We put out temporary speed bumps, which the Public Works Department took out. The, the temporary your speed signs, whatever we're calling them, the a traffic awareness sign, that was a citizen's request that I put in for funding to put signs in that, that weren't funded at all. None of the traffic calming solutions that any resident asked for last year across Amherst were funded. The police department have been the only people who have done anything to help. They put the trailer there. They've put efforts in to put more officers to come by. And just to hear over and over again that we can't do anything, that people don't care about 18-month-old children, that they don't care about five-year-olds. That's true. And I see you rolling your eyes. And you're late for dinner. And I'm so upset right now. I've been asking this town for three years after a child was almost hit by a speeding car. And over and over again, we do nothing. We just say that cat is, or that the tail is wagging the dog. Guilford needs to make a recommendation. But then no, Guilford says, he's told me in person that we don't, the town doesn't have to listen to the recommendations. They don't, we, we can do something. We can save a child's life. And instead we're just, we're doing nothing. And that's what happens over and over again. And I'll stop there, but please do something. It's just, it's so frustrating as a parent to feel like we live in a town that doesn't care about working families, that doesn't care about little children and their safety. And, and you have the power, you have the expertise to please do something. I'll, I'll stop there. I'm sorry. Um, who do you want next, Tracy? Um, I mean, we can, let's just go on the list or... Anybody? Um, Michelle. Hi, thank you. Michelle Labby, 34 High Point Drive. I am the chair of CONCOM and I spent three hours on a meeting last night because we took public comment because that is an important thing to do on public meeting. So I really encourage you tonight to listen to the people that have sat through this meeting for the last what, since 5.30, and please hear us out. What I'd like to present, because I am stepping away from my CPAC duties tonight, is I'm just gonna go bullet point, but this isn't just about the childcare. This is also just a dangerous intersection on Henry Street, there's a multi-car accident yesterday, just yesterday, which a three, st a three point stop sign could have prevented. You know, I don't know the details of it, but I wanna point that out that you're waiting three months for this, whereas you could have prevented that. You know, the town could have done something so long ago and that could have not happened. I grew up in Amherst, I grew up in North Amherst. I've been hit by a car on this intersection. This is just getting worse and worse and worse. That parking lot that you want to get rid of is used by cycling groups, hiking groups, 
running groups on the weekend. Yes, it is. And we know that because I live, I see you're shaking your head. Okay. And no, there's no, no, a lot of I, I, I wasn't saying getting rid of it. I was not saying that at all. Okay. The town owns that property. I don't think that reconfiguring the, the parking is going to solve the issue of speeding. Furthermore, the north side of the parking, which you were questioning, why are people parking like that? There is a there's a fire hydrant there, which restricts the parking and the fence. So it's really, it's a problem. Most of the staff park there and they're, yeah, it's a problem. But I don't think that parking more aggressively or differently is really going to solve any kind of speeding problems on the street. It's not just the students. This happens throughout the summer. It's all the time. I was picking up my kid there today and at 4.30, that police traffic sign was flashing blue constantly. Every single car passing by. I have seen town vehicles vehicles speeding by 40 miles an hour that is your speed and yet they just keep going what needs to happen is actual traffic calming and it's just it, I just want to make the point that this isn't just about the daycare because I understand it's a private organization and that there's probably public interest in that and I completely understand that and that's why I'm trying to make the point that this is about a very dangerous intersection that just needs to be addressed um okay last thing i think that's all i've got but thank you for considering this i understand it's challenging and i really do encourage you to stay a little extra longer and take the public comment because that is what this democracy in our town is for i'm sorry you're late for dinner my husband's upstairs with our kids i'm on a cpac meeting and i spent three hours last night on a town meeting so that's you know why we love our town and we're invested in it so thank you for hearing me out thank you for your comment um, Laura. Hey there, guys. Thanks for uh, taking the time to uh, talk about all this stuff today. Um, can somebody just really briefly fill me in? I've, I've been on the call for the last about 45 minutes um, as to uh, in like a sentence or two as to why nothing can be done kind of at a quicker pace. Um, it seems like the most obvious thing to me would be to put in speed bumps, which are all over UMass campus and encourage everyone to drive slow. Um, I, I don't understand why we can't just move forward with something that seems like a very obvious solution. So remember you're taking public comment. All right, well, thank you for your comment. So I'd like to just hear the rest of the comments, please um that that that's it N nobody's gonna nobody's gonna fill me in on that well during the i mean i'll just comment briefly but during the other parts of the meeting i mean there was just discussion about what's possible to do without an engineer tracy tracy we're not. taking public comment we right. cannot respond there's an open <laughs> making law violation uh dan Hi, thanks for uh, volunteering your time to have this meeting. Um, we send our daughter to the daycare and we also live right across the street from the daycare. So um, we watch the people speed by all the time. Um, and the, the blue lights on the traffic calming sign have been flashing in our dining room for the last month or two, um, you know, all, all hours of the day, <laughs> which is fun. Um, and so, yeah, it's, you know, we've been here for three years and it's it's pretty clear to me that at least it sounds like there's been a lot of history, but it it just seems like common sense dictates a three-way stop sign at Henry and Pine, regardless of whose driveway is where, there's gotta be an exception where if somebody's driving 40 miles an hour consistently past a daycare, and I understand it's a private daycare, it's not a school, but it just doesn't make any sense that people driving 40 miles an hour past a place that's a daycare whether or not people are being picked up or dropped off or the kids are out to play, you know, there should be a way to just say like, okay, let's think about this. Yeah. Let's, let's put a stop sign in here. And, you know, we'd still, then we would have issues with people going southbound. Um, and that's the the, the direction that the um, traffic calming sign is facing right now. And so people are speeding there um, as well, but, you know, again, thanks for your time to have this meeting, but we really, 
we do, you know, I, <laughs> I given that we, nice. given that we live here, we don't want our child to get hit by a car. We certainly don't want a child at the daycare to get hit by the car. And it, it shouldn't take a child getting hit by a car going 15 miles over the speed limit when we've already had a study by a police officer saying, you know, approximately 50% of the traffic on this road has been speeding to say, let's do something now. Let's put stop signs in, you know, and if, if somebody sues the town because they put a stop sign in to prevent a kid from getting hit at a daycare, I'll take that defense for the town. Like, I think that's a pretty winnable case. So once again, thanks so much for your time and, you know, feel free to reach out to us. We're here all, all day and all night watching the cars speeding by if anybody needs more sort of on the ground information. Um, have a good night. Uh, Julian? Hi, um, this is actually Julian's wife, say the um, I am uh, also a parent at the Christian Scott School. I walk my son to school on that road every single day. We walk him home very frequently. Um, and I have very frequently been very, very afraid, even parking my car and and um, you know, leaving a school building, I am often afraid by the speed at which cars, even during school pickup times and drop offs where there are clearly toddlers running around. Um, is 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 very very fast and very uncomfortable. And now there's been a an accident that we just know that people are working for a very long time. And I just I just want to express um, some. I found it pretty insensitive how quickly uh, this was just sort of um, dismissed as something that you know oh well you know we might get sued if we do anything. Uh, and I, I found that pretty insensitive, given that to me, I feel like the, the the thing that we should, the biggest consequence that we should be worried about is is one of these children getting hurt. That to me how, is the is the is the 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 most the biggest liability in the situation. And I just feel like this I, this attitude of like oh take it down the line another few months is a problem. And I so I wanted to just express my uh, discomfort with the way that was handled. And, and just urge a little bit more um, of your attention to this issue and to resolving it a little bit more quickly. Thanks so much. Eve. Hi all, I'm Eve Vogel. I'm a former member of the TAC um, and I live somewhat near this um, intersection. So a couple comments, one is um, the, engineering study that you talked about, Guilford, would be needed for, you described it as needed for any kind of infrastructural change. So things that would be like the barriers on the side of the road, or um, we didn't talk, I think you guys didn't talk about it, but I kept thinking about islands like on Pine Street, but, but things that you would put in that would actually change the way cars move right there, um, you said would need an engineering study. So two thoughts on that. One, there may be some things that can be done without an engineering study. And I don't know, but it would be worth talking that through whether, for example, those three-way stop signs would require an engineering study or whether something that wasn't an infrastructural change like um, painting a, a decorated intersection on the road to just really flag it as a different kind of place in the road I think I've shared those um, images with you from Portland multiple times, but there may be some non-infrastructural things that could be done without an engineering study. Um, and then the second comment, and, and I think you guys should have that conversation. Um, sorry. <laughs> and then I've got one more thing to say, which is that um, if you're going to do the engineering study, make sure that it doesn't just say sort of what you would advise, because you said you already did one and said, we don't really advise a, a stop sign, it's not warranted. But in a lot of our previous conversations in the TAC, there's been a lot of, a lot of the engineering studies look at those 85% rules and things like that, that people are now saying should be superseded by considerations of safety or pedestrian and bike access or, or small children or disabled users or um, vulnerable users. And so therefore, when the engineering study is done, make sure that it considers options that might not be officially warranted by that same engineering study, but that the community might want. 
Thank you. That was everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your public comments. OK. Um, so does the committee want to have any further discussion at this point? I think we've made our recommendation so far. So, and per the agenda, I think we're calling them the meeting over, right? Yeah, I, I guess I just want to make one more comment, which is um, that if we actually had um, a prioritization, um, um, you know, list that we had, um, if we had criteria for prioritizing projects such as this one, um, you know, they can be tackled in a much more um, equitable manner than, um, than, than, you know, an emergency manner like this one is, is um, emerging as. And, and that is not our problem. We have actually made a prioritization list for projects around the town. And in the absence of a charge, we are not able to get those types of um, of rational and more forward thinking kinds of um, you know um, lists to our um, town council, and, and rather than it have to be something that comes up as an emergency like this one. So that's my you know this whole discussion and the impassioned voices that I heard tonight, I guess I'm not, I'm, I'm glad to hear people are passionate about, about um, our roadways in town. Like all of us have been passionate for the last three, whatever, however many years it's been that we haven't had a charge when we haven't been able to implement rational road use in our town. So that, is not on us and we should not just be used as an emergency service. You know, we should be much more forward thinking in our town than, than, than this. And I would like that on record. Thank you. And I motion that we um, end our meeting. Second. Good night. Thank you all. All right. Bye, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye